Let's take a look at that again. Let's look at it from a two-dimensional standpoint. We're gonna start from a compressor like we always have. We're gonna have a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. It's vapor coming into the compressor and it's gonna be vapor coming out. Coming out, it's a high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. So it's low temperature, low pressure, vapor coming in and it's high temperature, high pressure, vapor coming out. It's a discharge line coming out, also known as a hot gas line. Coming in is a suction gas line, a low temperature vapor. That's gonna be key later on. But from there, we de-superheat it, we get it back down the saturation. That's a high number, but it's a very small amount of overall heat. The magic is where we make that refrigerant change state. It's changing state from a vapor to a liquid. That's the mass amount of B2s that's happening. And the compressor has to raise the temperature up higher than the outdoor temperature to compress that refrigerant to get the heat to leave. So it's 100 degrees outside. This will be, say, 120 degrees. So the heat is gonna be leaving the warmer refrigerant going to the cooler 100 degree air. Once that refrigerant is changing state from a vapor back to a liquid, we can then subcool it below saturation. We're getting even more heat out of it. It's still, even though it's all a liquid, it's still above the outdoor temperature. So we subcool the refrigerant even more. Say we subcool it about 10 degrees or so. It's a subcooled liquid. You touch the line, it's a warm subcooled liquid. From there, we travel on through our liquid line filter dryer, and then we hit our metering device. Key component, that metering device is reducing the pressure. And by reducing the pressure, pressure across that meeting device, we drop the boiling temperature. So now that refrigerant is able to boil at a very low temperature. And as that refrigerant boils, it's changing state. It's absorbing heat. The heat from the air in the house is making that refrigerant boil, but that refrigerant boiling is absorbing the heat from the air in the house. So we're literally absorbing the heat from the cooler air in the house and putting it into that refrigerant. So that refrigerant changes state. It's liquid and vapor. It's changed state. It's boiling through most of that evaporative cool. That's where most of the B2s of heat energy are happening. If the house is at 75 degrees, the refrigerant's boiling at 40 degrees. Big temperature difference right there. So the heat's leaving the air from the house going to the cooler refrigerant. But after all that refrigerant boils from a liquid to vapor, it's still all vapor, but it's still only 40 degrees. We can still absorb heat. The 75 degree heat's going to go to that 40 degree vapor. The difference is now the vapor is going to start superheating, sensible heat. So the temperature of that vapor heats up, say 41, 42, 43, etc. But it's superheating above the saturation point. Here in this line, the suction line, the suction gas line, it's a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. So if you were to feel this line, it's going to feel to you and your feelings cool. But according to the refrigerant, it is superheated above its saturation point. So coming back to the compressor, it's a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor, and the compressor raises that pressure. It takes all those molecules, combines them together, squeezes them together so that we can raise that pressure and the temperature higher than the temperature outside, absorbing heat from inside the house and rejecting heat outside the house. That's our basic refrigeration cycle we've talked about multiple, multiple times. But what happens if I was to change just simply two pipes? If I was to take these two pipes and switch them, so in other words, I take the compressor and I discharge it this direction, and then I take this side here and connect it to the suction side on the other side. Let's take a look at what that would be. So we have our compressor. It can only pump refrigerant one direction. It's still gonna suck in low pressure vapor, pump out high pressure vapor. So we're gonna take this high pressure vapor line. We're gonna repipe it and connect it to what was once the low pressure line. It's still gonna be vapor. Before it was low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. Now it's high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor, so it's still a gas. But we're gonna take this refrigerant now and we're going to send it inside the opposite direction. So we're gonna take this gas line, the big fat line, and we're gonna take it to the inside unit. And from there, we're gonna send it through what was once before the evaporator cooled, now is the condenser. And we're gonna take that refrigerant and go back and forth, and it's gonna be warmer than the temperature of the air in the house. So the very first thing we're gonna to do to that refrigerant is we're going to de-superheat it sensible, very little B2s of heat. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking that and making that refrigerant change state from a vapor to a liquid. That's where the magic of HVAC happens. A massive amount of latent heat is happening right here where it's at saturation. We're rejecting a ton of heat. Even though it's warm inside the house, we're raising this pressure 
higher than that. The temperature of this coil is going to be higher than the temperature of that air in the house. So the air is say at 70 degrees, this temperature over here will say at 90 degrees, the heat is leaving the warm refrigerant and going to the cooler air. So the air temperature simply warms up. After we change all the refrigerant from a vapor all the way to a liquid, the refrigerant liquid is still warm. It's still warmer than the air temperature. So what we want to do is we continue running it back through through few more turns of that coil and we sub cool that refrigerant we sub cool it below its saturation point now, this is all happening inside but then what we have is before we had our metering device right here but we're going to have to bypass that we're going to take that out of circuit and we're going to move that metering device so i'm going to keep this line right here we're just going to keep this the liquid line but now we had our liquid line filter dryer before we're going to have to turn that around so we're going to put our new liquid line filter dryer facing the opposite direction. So now we're gonna go through our liquid line filter dryer and we're gonna continue till we get to our outdoor coil. And now we're gonna need that metering device. So that's where we're gonna add that metering device. We must have that pressure drop in there. So we have our liquid line goes to our metering device. Metering device takes it, drops it from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture. Well, that refrigerant changes state immediately at that saturation. And then we're going to start sitting that refrigerant through the outdoor coil. Before it was a condensing coil. Now it's an evaporator coil because the refrigerant is boiling, evaporating. And even though the temperature outside is at a low temperature, the temperature of the refrigerant is even lower because we dropped the pressure. The refrigerant's boiling. The heat from outside is making the refrigerant boil. The refrigerant boiling is absorbing heat from the air outside. So the heat's leaving the air outside, going to the refrigerant. We make that refrigerant boil or change state through most of that coil. That's going to be saturation. And then it's still going to be cooler than the outdoor temperature. We take that refrigerant and we're going to superheat it above saturation. We're going to then continuously gain sensible heat into that refrigerant. And then we came back over here to where we started. We have that one pipe left and we have one pipe on the compressor left. So we're just simply going to connect those pipes together. So we connect the pipes and now we have a heat pump. This is a heat pump. Now as this system is running, we're absorbing heat from outside. Even though the temperature outside is lower, all we have to do is make the refrigerant pressure and temperature relationship where that refrigerant's boiling lower than the outdoor air temperature. So we're absorbing heat from outside and then we send, we compress, we compress that refrigerant together and we send that high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor inside. And then that refrigerant starts to condense, change state from a vapor to a liquid. As it does, it's happening at a higher temperature than the air of the house. We're rejecting, we're dumping heat into the house. We have our liquid line, just like we had before. It was a liquid line, but now it's heading the opposite direction. We're sending that liquid outside. And now we've moved our metering device outside. By having that metering device outside, we can change that refrigerant. We drop the pressure, we make it to where we're absorbing heat. Now before, this was a condenser. Now it's an evaporator. Before, this was an evaporator. Now it's a condenser. So instead of calling it the condenser evaporator, we simply call it the outside coil and the inside coil because it makes it easier to remember. One of the things we have different, and notice this time, this line is all red, whereas before it's blue. Before is low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor, and it was heading towards the compressor. Now it's high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, and it's heading away from the compressor, but it's still vapor. It was vapor before and it's vapor now, but now it's high pressure vapor. Over here in our liquid line, before we were sending liquid refrigerant to the inside through our liquid line. It's still liquid refrigerant, but now we're sending that liquid refrigerant just simply the opposite direction, but it's still going to be the liquid line. Before, this was our evaporator. We had to take a refrigerant, make it change state from a liquid to a vapor, then superheat the vapor. That same thing is still happening outside. We're making it change state from liquid to vapor, then we superheat the vapor. Outside before, we had to de-superheat, change from a vapor back to a liquid, and then subcool that liquid. That's still happening over here. We're de-superheating it, changing from a vapor back to liquid, and then subcooling that liquid. Before, we had a liquid refrigerant running this way as our liquid line. This is still going to be our liquid line. Our liquid refrigerant is just simply flowing the opposite direction. Now, one thing that's important to understand is a lot of people think that the lines change. No, this is still vapor, except now it's a high-pressure vapor. 
but it was still vapor. Before it was low pressure vapor, now it's high pressure vapor. Now we call it a hot gas line or a vapor line because vapor line applies to either one, the fat line. Before we needed to insulate this line so that we didn't absorb heat through the attic, so that we didn't have any condensation or pick up any latent heat as it's running down the walls. We still want this line to be insulated. I still need to keep this line insulated so that I don't release any extra heat. I wanna keep that heat inside the pipe until we get it over here inside the house. Just like before, even though it was warmer outside, we raised the pressure higher than the outdoor temperature to reject heat. And even though it was cooler inside, we dropped the indoor temperature lower than the air temperature to absorb heat. That same thing's happening. Here, we're dropping the pressure and temperature to be lower than the outdoor temperature. We're still absorbing heat. A lot of people get really hung up with this. Think, like, man, it's a heat pump. It's cold outside. How's it absorbing heat? We have to get hot and cold out of our minds. We have to think warmer than or cooler than. Remember, even at zero degrees Fahrenheit, there is still 460 degrees of heat. There is always heat down to absolute zero. So even though it's zero degrees, there's still heat available. Just as the temperature drops, we have to drop this pressure even lower. There's gonna be some complications there. We're gonna talk about that later on. But as long as we keep this refrigerant boiling at a lower temperature than the air temperature, we can still absorb heat from the air all the way down to minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. We take that vapor and we compress it, send it back inside. Even though it's warmer in the house, it's nice and toasty in the house. All I have to do is raise that pressure higher than the temperature of the air in the house. The heat's gonna leave the refrigerant. The refrigerant's gonna change state. It's gonna reject massive amount of BTUs. We have to make it change state back into a liquid because I need that liquid to be able to change state at the outdoor unit. So notice all these components are the same, except I have to change my filter dryer. It has to be facing a different direction. I have to move my metering device from inside to outside. And then every time we switch, we have to take all the refrigerant out and we have to repipe the compressor. We just simply have to change these two pipes over. Well, no, that's absolutely insane. There has to be a better way to do that. And I'm glad you asked because there is a better way to do that. We're gonna have to add just some few simple components. So to make things simple, we're gonna start right here. I'm going to erase this line and I'm going to erase this line. Notice that I have this high pressure vapor here and my low pressure vapor here from the system. I have my low pressure pipe from the compressor and my discharge pipe of the compressor. Overall, I have four pipes. One, two, three, four. I got four pipes. So we're gonna need a valve, what we call a four-way reversing valve, that's gonna connect those four pipes. And this reversing valve is going to simply reverse the direction of that vapor. And so we're just gonna put a reversing valve here at the top. And this reversing valve is gonna have three pipes on one side, and it's gonna have one pipe on the opposite side. And we're gonna show you a picture in here shortly, but right now just think there's three on one side and only one pipe on the other. The pipe that has only one pipe by itself is always discharge gas. High temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. That's always, always, always. If you look at any reversing valve and there's one pipe by itself, it's gonna go straight to the compressor and maybe a muffler in between there, but that pipe right there is always, 100% of the time, always, discharge gas, high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. On the other side, the pipe of three, the one in the very, 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 very middle is always gonna be suction. We call this true suction because notice everything's changing. Well, the true suction is always going to be suction. So we're gonna take this pipe in the middle, we're gonna come over and it's gonna go back to the compressor. Now notice we're already halfway there. We had four pipes and now we've already used half of them. So by understanding that the discharge line always goes to the one by itself, the three in the middle always comes back, that, that's half of your battle of reversing valve. We're gonna do that same exact thing on our top unit. We're going to back this pipe off and we're gonna back this pipe off. We're gonna draw a reversing valve just like we did before. And just like before, we're gonna take our high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, and connect it to the one pipe by itself. And then we're gonna take the one in the very, very, very center, and we're gonna bring that over and connect it back to the compressor. We'll put some little arrows on here so we don't get confused later. And that is always going to be the same. Now, while it's easy to remember to do that, it's not actually pumping in a circle. 
that's just simply the pipes that are always together. So now that we have this set, this is done, it's out of the way, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Now we can look and think about the discharge line. Which way do we want the heat to go? So in this mode, our high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor leaves the compressor and goes to that one pipe by itself. Now if we think it's summertime, we have this high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. Do you want that high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor to go outside or do you want that high temperature, high pressure of superheated vapor to go inside your house in the summertime? Well, hopefully you got the correct answer. We want to send that high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor out of the house. So here we have the pipe of the compressor. We have this one that's closest to the outdoor. I'm simply going to connect it through the reversing valve. We connect it to the condenser, the outdoor coil. It's going to desuperate, change from a vapor back to a liquid, subcool that liquid refrigerant. We're going to take it through our liquid line filter dryer over here to our meeting device, boil it from a liquid to a vapor, superheat that vapor, low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor comes back and oh no, we're leaking refrigerant out. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to connect it to simply the only pipe that's left. And see so here we have this one pipe that's left. And now we've completed our refrigeration cycle for air conditioning mode. Now there's some more details we're gonna go back and add, but that's simply our reversing valve. Now let's look at that same exact cycle, that same process for the winter time. So if we think about the same point, our discharge line, our true discharge gas, high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, always, 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 and always, where do we wanna send that high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor in the middle of winter? Well, I wanna have that going inside. So now we're gonna take this high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. We're gonna go this direction because that's where my indoor cool is at. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna hop over this line just like we did before. We're gonna go over, down, and we're gonna connect that piping just like we did before, except now it's high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. That line's gonna go into the indoor coil where it's going to desuperheat, change from vapor to a liquid, rejecting massive amounts of latent heat, subcool that liquid refrigerant. We're gonna move our metering device. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Through our liquid line filter dryer that's now facing the opposite direction to our outdoor metering device. We're gonna drop the temperature, drop the pressure, drop the boiling point, boil the refrigerant from a liquid vapor, absorb massive amount of heat from outside. We're gonna superheat that vapor and oh my gosh, we're leaking refrigerant. What are we gonna do? We have to connect simply the only two pipes that are left. We're gonna connect the suction pipe to the pipe that's left right here. And now we have completed our refrigeration cycle. So now you can see which way we're pumping the gas. But we have some issues. If I have this valve automatically change, we're still gonna to have to go out and rechange our filter dryers every time we change modes, which is absolutely insane. Nobody's gonna do that. So what we're gonna use is a bi-flow filter dryer. This filter dryer is going to filter refrigerant in either direction, whether the refrigerant is flowing this way or refrigerant is flowing that way, it's still gonna filter it. We're gonna go into more detail about that later, but it's simply filtering refrigerant in either direction. So we're also gonna have that same bi-flow filter dryer here. So no matter which way it's flowing, in the summertime it's flowing this way through the filter dryer, it's still filtering refrigerant. And the wintertime it's flowing this way through the liquid line filter dryer, it's still filtering the refrigerant. How cool is that? So simple. But now we have the most complex one of all, our metering device. Here we have our metering device. We're gonna to have to move our metering device to the outdoor and that's gonna be quite complicated. What we could do though is leave our metering device here. Just leave it in place. And then we could simply put a check valve or a bypass. So the refrigerant flows this direction, it pushes open a little bypass and it allows the refrigerant to bypass around that metering device like it's not even there. We're gonna go into more detail on this later, but it just simply bypasses it. So in the summertime, we're sending refrigerant this way, that bypass is closed and it has to go through the metering device and meter the refrigerant. But in the winter time, it's pushing the opposite direction. It's going this direction. It's gonna push this little check valve open and the refrigerant can bypass that metering device like it's not even there. We go through our bi-flow filter dryer and now we have our meeting device outside that's dropping the temperature and the pressure. But if we think about it, we still have to have our meeting device out here even in the summertime. So we're gonna put our meeting device right here. Well, goodness gracious, what are we gonna do in the summertime? Uh, we're gonna have two meeting devices. Simple solution. We're simply gonna put a little bypass on it here. And we're gonna have our little bypass here but in this case, 
we want the bypass closed. We want to meet the refrigerant through. In the summertime, the refrigerant's going this way, it's gonna open the bypass and go around it. But in the wintertime, it's pushing this way and it's being metered. The, the check valve is closed and we have to meter the refrigerant. And then in the summertime, it goes around. It opens the check valve and just lets the refrigerant bypass that metering device. Quite simple. So if we really look at the whole cycle in the summertime, we're bypassing the outdoor metering device. This is our liquid line and we're measuring refrigerant all the way to our metering device. This metering device is being engaged. We're metering the refrigerant to the evaporator coil. And then we have our suction going all the way back, our full cycle. But if we look at the winter time, it simply changes direction. We're sending the hot gas this way, which pushes the same check valve, pushes it open. Here it was closed, metering the refrigerant. This way it's open, it's bypassing. We send that liquid refrigerant through a liquid line by flow filter dryer. And then here we're metering the refrigerant. In the summertime, it's going this direction. It's bypassing that metering device like it's not even there. But in the winter time, it's now metering. It's going through. That check valve is closed and we have to send all that refrigerant through the metering device. So even though we have two metering devices, there's only one being used at a time. In the summertime, it's not even there. We're metering inside before our evaporator coil. And the winter time, we're going to bypass this one out here like it's not even there because we don't need it. And we're going to be metering refrigerant through this metering device before it goes through this evaporator coil or outdoor coil. And now we have the basics of a refrigeration cycle. These are our core components. We have to at some point check some pressures. And if you put your suction gauge here, it's no big deal in the summertime. But what if that reversing valve was stuck? Or what if it's winter time? That same low pressure gauge being hooked there is going to possibly blow or damage your gauge. So we have to find a safe place that we can hook that blue gauge. And where can we hook that gauge? That it's always going to be suction and that's gonna be that true suction line. The true suction line we talked about before, we're gonna hook our gauge there because no matter what mode we're in, that is always low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. So we can always get our suction pressure before it goes to the compressor on no matter what mode. We're gonna show you this later on, but there will be a third port right there for that to happen. We're also gonna to need to measure our high pressure. Now this gets a little tricky. Uh, on most units, you can still get that high pressure right here on the liquid line. It's still liquid pressure, but there's some units you can't because of the placement of that port. So in some units, you're gonna to have to move it to where you're getting the high pressure here. And we're gonna go into detail later about all of these different components and when you're gonna use one, when you can use the other, the hows, the whys of everything else on here. This is the first big step to understanding the refrigeration cycle and seeing what's happening with the heat pump. So now if we have our basic understanding of our heat pump cycle, let's take a look and see what's happening. So now we have our heat pump system. This is that reversing valve we were talking about before. And here we have our metering device outside like we was talking about before. The compressor is gonna be behind this. It's gonna be inside this coil. But the compressor pumps out a high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. Remember that one pipe by itself is right here. So if we follow this pipe, it's got a service port in it so we can always measure what that discharge is. It comes down here and it's coming from underneath. That's where the compressor's at. So it's high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor goes into this reversing valve. We're gonna discharge that gas over here to this side. It's gonna come high temperature, high pressure discharge. It's gonna come through that big fat line, the vapor line, the hot gas line. And that line's gonna run all the way over to our indoor unit. And it's gonna to connect to that large line, the fat line, the vapor line. From there, we're gonna send it through that indoor coil where we desuperheat it, change it from a vapor to a liquid. Then we're gonna subcool it. All of those temperatures are gonna be higher than the temperature in the house. We're then gonna bypass our metering device that's inside. It's just gonna bypass it like it's not even there. And then we're gonna send that refrigerant through the liquid line, the small line. It's gonna still be liquid refrigerant, but now it's gonna be flowing this direction through our bi-flow filter dryer. And that's gonna go all over here to our liquid line of the outdoor unit. For now, we're gonna send that liquid refrigerant through this point here, and it's gonna to go to our metering device. And our metering device is going to meter the refrigerant, drop the temperature, drop the pressure. From there, we leave our metering device and we start going through our, our outdoor coil to where we're 
changing state from a liquid to a vapor. We're absorbing heat. This latent heat changes state, evaporation, the refrigerant's literally boiling. Even though it's cold outside, cold, it's still the refrigerant's boiling. It's absorbing heat from the outdoors. After we boil all the refrigerant from a liquid to a vapor, then we superheat that vapor. So now it's a low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. And we come back to this really big fat line. This fat line connects back to our reversing valve. And it's just going to simply make a little loop and connect it to this center line. This is the true suction. There's a little port right here, but this is the true suction line. From there, that true suction line is going to continue all the way back to our compressor and refrigeration cycle has completed. That's on the heating side. We're absorbing heat from outside and then we're rejecting that heat inside. Even though it's cooler outside, we're simply dropping the temperature, the boiling temperature of that refrigerant lower than the air temperature. We're absorbing heat. Even though it's warmer inside, we're compressing that refrigerant. We're building that saturation temperature higher than the temperature of the air inside. In the summertime, we simply do the opposite. We reverse this. Remember from the compressor, this pipe by itself is always high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. It's always true discharge. From there, we just send it to the opposite pipe. Before I send it that way, now I'm going to send it this way. We send this high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor directly to the outdoor coil where we de-superheat it, change it from a vapor to a liquid where the massive BTUs are being rejected. Then we subcool it below that. Now the refrigerant leaves the coil as a subcooled liquid. It flows back where a metering device is, but now it's able to bypass the metering device. This one has a full separate check valve where it actually bypasses that metering device. And then it connects to our liquid line. This is still the liquid line, but now it's liquid refrigerant flowing towards our metering device. That liquid refrigerant is flowing all the way through our liquid line of our indoor coil and there it's going to hit our metering device. It bypassed this metering device but now this metering device is being used. We're going to drop the temperature, drop the pressure, drop the boiling temperature to where we're boiling refrigerant lower than the temperature of the air in the house. The refrigerant's boiling from a liquid to vapor, absorbing heat, absorbing heat from the air in the house. We change it from a liquid to a vapor, then we superheat that vapor and we come back through the fat line the low temperature, low pressure, superheated line, it's still gonna be vapor. Low temperature, superheated vapor comes all the way back to our fat line here, our vapor line. From there, we connect back to our four reversing valve. We just make a little loop, connect to our always true suction pipe. And from there, that true suction pipe is gonna come down all the way underneath this back into the compressor and we've completed a refrigeration cycle. Simply in the summertime, we reject heat outside, absorb heat inside. Reject heat outside, absorb heat inside. In the winter time, we absorb heat from outside, reject that heat inside. Absorb heat from outside, reject that heat inside. It's a refrigeration cycle. It's a reverse cycle where we're reversing the direction of the refrigerant flow, but we don't reverse what the lines are. The small lines are still going to be liquid. The other line is going to change from low pressure to high pressure, but it's still vapor and it's still vapor. And when that reversing valve switches, it's still vapor on both, on all the sides, it's still vapor. One point it's high pressure vapor, one point it's low pressure vapor, but it's still a vapor. It's a four-way vapor reversing valve. Now stay tuned, we still have a whole lot more information to talk about, but this just gives you an idea, and this is only one brand. This one has the components lined out. You can kind of see what's happening a little bit easier. Every single brand is different about where they're going to place these components and what these components are going to look like, which direction they turn them. But we're going to go through all these components. We're just simply giving the basics at this point, and we're going to go into more components in detail as we go. So stay tuned.